So this one, I thought it's about time we put to rest why all objects fall to earth at the same rate, all right? Right, because you would think that something heavier would fall faster than something lighter. Right. You would think that. Right. You know. And then when people see that, their explanation is gravity pulls on pulls all on objects the same. Right. But that's wrong. Okay. It actually pulls harder on the heavier objects. Gravity pulls harder on the heavier objects. Yes, it does. Now this is totally counterintuitive. <laughs> this is my whole point. Totally counterintuitive. That's why it's time to put, just to get this out there. Right. So let's go back to Aristotle. Okay. Aristotle has like a huge modern fan club yeah. who, where he can do no wrong. Right. But in physics, almost everything he said was wrong. Wow. So that's why we don't. What a dumbass. <laughs> so if you read his writings, I'll paraphrase one of them, it's um, objects will fall at a rate proportioned to how much mass they have. Right. So it's, if you follow that reasoning through, if something weighs 10 times as much, it should fall 10, 10 times, times as fast. fast. Yeah. Right? I mean, that, I mean that, and th everybody just agreed with that. I mean, didn't it occur to them that maybe <laughs> we should test this? No, because testing an idea had to emerge as a thing to do. It's so funny that we take the scientific method for granted. For granted. Um, so that's what people thought until Galileo said, let me test this. Right. Let me test whether things fall at the same rate. Now, it's, it is rumored that he didn't actually perform this experiment, Ooh. that he did it, did it just as a thought experiment. Okay. But in either case, it's correct. Right. It okay? Worked. Yeah. So the experiment as described, he goes to the Leaning Tower Pizza, gets a heavy object and a light object. Mm -hmm. But they both have some density to them so that air is not a big factor. So he drops them, they fall exactly the same rate to the ground. Wow. And this experiment was repeated in the Apollo missions. So in the Apollo mission, right. Apollo 15, it turns out, they, they had a hammer and they had a feather. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon? How come no one has ever talked about this when it comes to the Galileo experiment that I'm they just, did at Apollo 15 yes. on the moon? So, oh, wait, you know why? Because we didn't go to the moon. <laughs> That's why we don't talk about it. So on the moon, right. he's got the hammer, he's got the feather. Right. And... Let's go of them, and they both drop at exactly the same rate. The feather too cool. and the hammer. But what made it work is that there was no air. Right. So if you got some cavity or some room where you evacuate the air, you could it do that still experiment work here on Earth. On Earth, right. okay? So yeah. you didn't need the moon to make that happen. Right. Okay. Right. So Chuck, I want to perform that experiment in my office. Okay. So I need a, like a, a heavy, heavy object thing and a lighter and a light, object. And a lighter object. So I have a little so red ball here. Little red ball. Can you feel that? Just, just uh, a little red okay. ball. Okay. Well, okay, Charles, yeah, that's Charles cool. Toy a red kid. ball, a little bigger than a marble, right? And I have a, I happen to have, don't judge me, an a, onion, an onion in my office, another child's toy. <laughs> no, I just got a lot of <laughs> random... for a very unfortunate <laughs> child. <laughs> so obviously, one is much heavier than the other. Yeah, definitely. I take them and drop them. Okay, and here they go. Oh, look at that! So much so, yeah, the onion made a sound, and it looked like the little ball made the sound before it bounced up. Oh, it's, it's it looks like, like the, the, uh, the, the little ball, ball was the making sound. the onion sound. Here's what's going on. Right, what? The force of gravity is proportional to how much mass is in the object. This has more mass. Definitely. The force of gravity is higher on this. R oh. Ask yourself, if you're gonna push a small object down the road, mm -hmm. or a big object, tell me about the force that you'd have to in part, on the large object compared to the small object. I need more force. You need more force. I need more force. So if you and I are gonna accelerate two different objects down the street at the same rate, but one is much more massive, how do we get them to go down the street at the same rate? I need a lot more force for the larger object. Correct. For the more massive object. The more massive object. Right. So this has a lot more gravitational force operating on it. Right. To, to accelerate. accelerate. Look at that. And by how much? By the exact amount, such that everything falls at, at exactly the same, the rate. same rate. So basically, the lesson is 
Gravity is lazy because it's like, I'm only going to do what is necessary to move your butt. <laughs> that is all I'm giving. I'm only giving exactly what's... But if you got more the, butt, I got to put in extra I'll force. Put some more but, extra, but, but if you got less butt, I'm, I'm, putting, in I'm less. Less, putting in less. Correct. That's amazing. Correct. Einstein saw this and he said, hmm, if that's the case, I wonder if that's a deep principle of the universe. Ooh. Okay. Wow. O okay. I, I got to say, Einstein, that's that's pretty impressive to go from Galileo dropping right. here on Earth yes. to, hmm, that might be something that plays out throughout the entire universe. So he, you can measure what gravitational acceleration is. Right. On Earth, it's 9.8 meters per second per second, per second, per second squared, right? right. Or 32 feet per second, second per second, which means for every second these fall, it goes 32 feet per second faster. Right. So after one second, how fast is it moving? 32 feet. Per second? Per second. After two seconds, how fast is it going? 64 feet. After three seconds? 128. No, 96. Well, 96. Sorry, because it's 32. Uh, yeah, 96. Keep adding 32. Right, add another. Right. So that's then, accelerating. Right. <laughs> All right? So acceleration always has a speed and then an extra time measure. Gotcha. 32 feet per second for, for every, every second, second it's falling. Swelling. What Einstein wondered is... Right. If you're in a rocket, accelerating through space at 32 feet per Per second per, per second. second the floor of the spacecraft will come towards these two at 32 feet per second per second and it'll look to you like these are dropping he said that in a spaceship what you observe is indistinguishable from what gravity does to it on earth or on any other gravitational force so that the linear acceleration through space is indistinguishable from Gravity operating just by being gravity. This is called the equivalence principle. That makes, ah, oh, that's amazing. It's amazing. That's great. And it explains to you why yes. these are falling at the same rate. Exactly. Because the floor is coming up at the same time. Right. Okay? So, so that means if you're accelerating at 1G and you're in space, then you're not going to be floating. You're going to have- You're not floating. You're not floating. You have, there, there's, there's 1G uh, acting upon you there at are, all times. There are sci-fi movies made this day where anytime they're in space, even though you see the rockets burning, right. they're all just floating in the craft. Right. No, they're not. No. They're pinned up against it, the back it, wall. It, right. Right. That's cr crazy. Crazy, yes. Crazy. Yes. But now you can see, if I just let go of these in a rocket, they don't know to do anything just to stay there, and the bottom of the rocket comes, comes toward up. them, and to me, it looks like they fell together. They fell together. Look at that. That's the equivalence principle. That Einstein. That, Let me tell you. My boy Einstein. He was no Aristotle. <laughs> That guy was smart. <laughs> <laughs> you mean it in the other direction? Yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so that's why all objects fall at the same rate because gravity pulls on the heavier things more, more. so that they all end up accelerating at exactly the same rate. That's great. Oh, and he used this argument to show that if you're on this rocket accelerating and you, oh, you turn on a beam of light from one side of the rocket, to cross the rocket to the other, okay? Mm -hmm. The rocket is accelerating. Then while the beam is going a straight line across, the beam will look like it curves down right. because the rocket is coming up into it. So he concluded that if, these, if a rocket ship and Earth are otherwise identical, then the force of gravity should bend a beam of light. Mic drop. That's insane. Mic drop. Let me tell you something. Galileo, smart dude. Einstein, smarter dude. Aristotle, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. The Galileo experiment. Much more about that than you probably ever cared to know. And apologies to the Aristotle fans out there. He just did not really hold it up with his physics. All right, we got to go, Chuck. Oh, man, that was great. Okay. That was great. <laughs> All right. This has been a Star Talk Explainer, yet another one of those. Until next time, keep looking up. Uh -huh.